Welcome back to the Distressed Princess. I'm Rhonda. In today's video, I'm working on some glass front cabinet doors that I found at the junk store and some other thrift flips that you're just going to love. Also, stay till the end of the video because I have a bonus Dollar Tree DIY. So I found these glass front cabinet doors at the junk store and they were marked $10 a piece. And I also got an extra 20% discount on them because I bought all three and I had plans for each one. They were pretty dirty from just sitting in the store so I had to clean them off real good first. And then I removed all the hardware for painting and I taped off the glass on both sides. And today I'm going to be playing with milk paint. I've only used this one other time. It went very well. It's made by Fusion Mineral Paint and you have to mix it up. It's a one to one ratio of the powder mix out of this bag and water. So I just mix up enough that I think is going to cover the front and back of this cabinet door and I plan to use two coats. So mix accordingly because it won't keep. You have to use this paint the day you make it up. And the package also says it's best to wait about 10 minutes after you mix it up before using. Now, of course, this is going to be a thin sort of paint, so you'll want to protect your surfaces while you're using it because it will drip and run, but the results are really, really good. And here it is with its first coat, and I do use my hair dryer to dry it up. And the thing about adding heat to the milk paint is that's where you get your wonderful old distressed chips and crackles. And I'll show you a close-up of this as soon as I get the second coat on and dried. Here it is with the second coat on the front side and you can see without even touching it, it's already distressing itself. I just love working with this milk paint. Then I took some light grit sandpaper and distressed around the edges. Then I removed the masking tape and cleaned off the glass again. Then on the back side, I painted it with white fusion paint. You could use any kind of paint that will stick to glass. And this is going to be the backdrop for what's going to be a really cool dry erase board. Then I wanted to add a knob where the little hole is, where the knob should go. And that is where the dry erase marker is going to hang. Now this is just a random knob that I had on hand and the bolt that it came with was too long. So I had to take it apart and I planned to do E6000 to glue it back into place. I also wasn't really fond of the design on the knob so I just painted it with some white chalk paint. But I didn't like that there was a hole where the original screw was, so I rummaged around and found another one that was shorter. And so I could piece it back together and put it into the little hole that's already there with some E6000, and that solved my problem. And then I added a hanger on the back so it can hang on the wall. And tied a juice string around the knob so that the pin could attach. The second cabinet door transformation is the easiest because I didn't have to paint this door. I had some IOD rub-on transfers that was going to be just perfect with this color that the cabinet door already was. Working with the IOD rub-on transfers is a piece of cake. Just slide it off of its backing. Make sure before it sticks to the glass or whatever you're putting it on, before it touches it, that's where it's going to go because a lot of times when it touches the glass, then it's already stuck. So make sure you've got it centered properly before it touches anything. 
then with a little plastic tool that they give you just rub it all over the design and I like to peel as I go instead of rubbing it all over and then peeling the whole thing off I like to rub and peel and make sure that I get all the little bits and pieces stuck before I remove the whole piece of plastic and guys, within five minutes, you've got a really professional looking piece of art. Now this thing I thrifted and it was a pretty neat looking decoration, but I wasn't tickled with the colors of it, even though I, I love the print. The little boy and the little girl is really cute, but it's just not my color style. So I'm going to take this apart. I'm going to remove the hardware so that the lid will come off. And also I'm peeling off that paper because it was going to come off anyway. And I wanted to give a mention to this little screwdriver set that you can get at the Dollar Tree. I use mine all the time and it's perfect for removing all the tiny little screws and things that comes on the hardware of my thrifted items. I used a razor blade to scrape off the extra stuck pieces of paper and sandpaper to make it smooth. And this decoration was made to look like a big fat book and so I decided that I wanted to paint the binding and the little corner pieces with that same um, vintage laurel green milk paint that I used in the first project. And the distressing and chippiness that I got with this paint on this project was even better than the first. I think it might have something to do with how porous your material is. So if the paint can't get down inside of the material, it just kind of sit on top. And I think that actually when that happens, that's when you get the best crackles. It looks like it wouldn't be easy to work with as derpy as it is, but trust me, by the time you dry this first coat, and then put the second coat on, it's really easy to work with. Here's a close up of what happens when you apply the heat to the milk paint and you can just see the paint drying up and then it kind of gets flaky and chippy like this is just the oldest thing that's been sitting around and been painted a hundred times and now it's just chipping off. Then I use my sandpaper to do a little extra distressing. You have to be real gentle or else that chippy stuff is going to come completely off. So just be very gentle and distress it until you're happy. And when you have a lot of chippiness like I do on this one, then you'll want to seal it with a clear sealer so that it doesn't chip anymore and scratch off. And here's a close up of the chipped paint after I put the sealer on and if I'm running my hands over it, it doesn't budge. Now we're going to use an IOD paint inlay to decorate this box. And the first step to doing that is to put a base layer coat of paint down. I'm just using some white chalk paint. Also, that's really important. You want to use chalk paint when using a paint inlay. And don't worry, I'm gonna walk you through all of this. So this is an IOD paint inlay pack. Inside there are several sheets and they are the same design, but you can line them up if you need to uh, cover a bigger project and the designs will all line up and match right. But I'm just gonna be needing one sheet today. The first step is cutting your paper down to size. So I just laid it over this decoration and cut a piece out that would match where I needed it to go. The second step is to add your next coat of paint onto your project and you want it to be sort of a thicker coat because there needs to be a lot of wet paint for this paint inlay to rest in in order for it to work. 
and you want to work in small sections no bigger than the one I'm working on like this because you don't want to run the risk of your chalk paint drying up before you get the whole thing painted so you want your whole surface that you want the design to go on to be wet paint then step three would be to add the design on top and be sure you do with the painted side down so the more vibrant side of the paper is going to go down into your wet paint and then you can smooth it out you can use a brayer if you want to get all of the wrinkles out but i don't really worry so much about the wrinkles because the wrinkles tend to make more of a distressed effect if you want a perfect design on your material then I suggest maybe wetting the paper on the back side before you apply it and then using a brayer to roll out the wrinkles. After the paper is applied, then go over the whole thing with a mist of water. And I like to use my damp washcloth to uh, push it down, make sure that that paper and paint gets down into your wet paint, and then you're gonna let it set to dry. I followed all these same steps to apply a sheet of this inlay on the back side of the project too. When the paper is dry to the touch, then you go back with a little spray bottle of water and mist over the paper. This activates the paint in the paint inlay. Then I like to take a damp washcloth and press down to make sure that the whole project is damp. This is so that all of the paint is activated and it also helps to remove the paper revealing your design. Now when I peel up the corner of this, you're gonna see that some of the paint didn't transfer and that's because that corner with the chalk paint got dried up before I got the design laid on top. So that's why that's very important. But there was enough design transferred onto the project that I thought it looked really pretty and distressed. And that's it. The paint will still be wet, so be careful. It needs to dry, and also you can seal it if you like. And that's how a paint inlay works. Now for the bonus Dollar Tree craft. At the Dollar Tree Plus, they have these nice sized citronella candle buckets for only $3. You can also find them at some family dollar stores. The first thing I did was remove the handle. Then I painted the outside with my Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Picket Fence, but you could also use spray paint, chalk paint, or acrylic paint. And the fun part is adding these rub-on transfers that you can find right at the Dollar Tree. So I picked out the Farm Fresh Flowers because it looked like a perfect size label to go on this bucket. And just like with IOD transfers, you just cut out your design, remove the paper backing, and then rub it onto your project using some sort of device. You could even use a popsicle stick. Then use any kind of black paint and a foam brush to add in some old enamelware looking chippiness. I styled it with a wreath that I got from the Dollar General store for $3. And then I also used this little plaque that I picked up at the Dollar General for $1 and used it as a riser because it needed to be a little taller. Now let's take a look back at all our DIYs today.
thanks for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content. And you can also click the link that I provided for you right here if you'd like to see more DIYs now. Until next time, bye!